Solenis is a power brand in its own sphere. Let's also detail India's leading brand in its space diversity. So I think uh, we, we, we believe that India is a really a, a great place for us to invest. Well, that's excellent. We hire people for, for a long run. People have a lot of respect for this kind of a role. What is good for the planet is good for us, like they say. Trademarked a phrase ESG plus C. Plus C is our customers. I like the plus C. Well, look, I think it's a great opportunity for both businesses. But I like your clarity of thought, the message of our Prime Minister, vocal for local. Namaskar and greetings from BW Hotelier and BW Business World. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this very special show. This episode of the BWH Dialogues brings together three global leaders of Solenis and Diversity together on one platform in Mumbai as we shoot this episode. I have with me John Panichela, who is the CEO of uh, Solenis. He works out of Philadelphia in the United States. I have Somer, who works out of Dubai and is the president of Diversity Emerging Markets. And he works out of uh, Dubai, like I said. I also have with me today Brijesh Pratap Singh Rathor, who is the Vice President South Asia for Diversity Institutional and Global Strategic Accounts for APAC. He is based locally over here in Mumbai. Solenis is a power brand in its own sphere and they have uh, recently acquired Diversity in 2023. Let me introduce Solenis in a short brief. Solenis is a leading global producer of specialty chemicals focused on delivering sustainable solutions. For water intensive industries, the company's product portfolio includes a broad array of water treatment chemistries, process aids, functional additives, and cleaner and dis disinfectants, as well as state-of-the-art monitoring and control systems. Headquartered in Wilmington, Delaware, the company has 70 manufacturing facilities strategically located around the globe, and they employ a team of over 15,400 professionals. Yes, that number is right, and in 130 countries. Let me see who can count these number of countries on their fingertips. Well, John can. He runs the business across six continents. And Solenis, like I said, acquired diversity in 2023. Having spoken about Solenis, let's also detail India's leading brand in its space, diversity. We know it all. Diversity is an over 100 year old total solutions provider for hospitality. Hotel has put their trust in diversity's solutions because they take a holistic approach to clean, acting as their complete hygiene partner and providing support step of the way. No matter the size of the hotel or hospitality operation, they create a unique cleaning system that is right for you. Introductions done. It is now time to get rolling with the first question for you, John. Let me begin. John, tell me, how does the collective strength of Solenis, the new entity per se, contribute to the global and Asian market and what mutual advantages do both the market and Solenis derive from this collaboration? Thank you for having me. Uh, so uh, our strategy, our thesis on acquiring diversity was around how to build a company with similar customer intimacy, similar solution profile, and that's what we found. Uh, so I'll give you an example in the hotel space, which you're very familiar with. Um, our solutions from diversity help you clean your laundry, take care of your kitchen, protect your floors, provide disinfection in your facilities. 
But now with Selena's, you can add pool and spa care and maintenance. You could also add building heating and ventilation, the cooling and heating systems in your buildings. So what we like about the combination is the same service and customer intimacy, intimacy model, but a much broader solution set. And that's what brought us together with Diversi. To put it lightly, it's more complementing than not. Yeah, that was the really fascinating thing was 100% complementary. We did not compete with each other almost in any segment. So really, we're adding solutions to the current industry market verticals like hospitality. And, ex and extending the basket of offerings. Yes. All right, great. So same customers, more products, more services. Correct. Excellent. That brings me to the next question, which is about India. We are the world's fifth largest economy, and soon we are going to be the third largest economy and the fastest growing one among the major economies. What is your perspective, if I may ask, on the Indian market and the emerging trends and opportunities within the water and uh, hygiene business space? So I think uh, we, we, we believe that India is a really a, a great place for us to invest. So uh, what we're planning to do is uh, continue to invest in this growth. There aren't many places in the world with this size of an economy that grow 7% a year. So we're really excited about that. And uh, you know we plan to add more resources, add more in the technology space. So building more solutions for customers uh, I think you'll see us invest in technology, invest in people, and uh, bring local manufacturing to India. Well, that's excellent. So, you know, I have this question uh, uh, to ask you. When you planned this acquisition, uh, was India part of your concentration set or it was one of the factors or none at all? Well, what was clearly part of our consideration was the uh, legal entity and geographic presence that Diversi had in, in Southeast Asia, Middle East. Salenas was a $5 billion company before the acquisition. Diversi was a $3 billion company. But when you looked at the country overlap, uh, there was a big opportunity in Southeast Asia, Middle East. We saw that as an ability for where the faster growth in the world was happening. Our solutions could be added to those legal entity structures where diversity had geographic presence and we thought, hey, that can really drive some accelerated growth for the company. Good. So tell me, how is the business impacted by the ongoing geopolitical developments, if I, were, if I was to ask, as we see around the world and what ramifications do these changes pose for your operations? Because there is a bit of a, a, a disquiet and upheaval. Well, when you do business in 130 countries, you know, there's always something that uh, is a disruption. So our first concern is for the safety of our employees. Uh, we have people every day in harm's way in some of these countries, so we do our best to protect our employees in those environments. But our strategy is uh, to build uh, solutions and have manufacturing. You said we have 70 locations around the world. Generally, we make in-region for region. So we're not the kind of company that produces in China to serve India. Uh, so we'll have local people in Southeast Asia, local manufacturing in Southeast Asia. So the, while there's disruptions around the world, uh, we're not the kind of company that, uh, that relies on production in a country to serve the world. And so while these disruptions can be harmful to our people, generally we can manage through the business environment. I like your clarity of thought and directionally it sits in well with the message of our Prime Minister who has been trumping the cause of vocal for local. So where that sits in so well into our make, make in India philosophy. Thank you. but. Let me come down now to this question, which is quite central to the business that Solenis and Diversi has, sustainability, right? It's no more a buzzword. It's do it if you can, otherwise you'll be pushed to do it. Uh, with sustainability becoming a focal point for businesses, what strategies does Solenis have in place and how will these initiatives contribute to a sustainable impact on the people 
and on the planet? Well, I'd <coughs> say sustainability is at the core of our DNA. It's what we've done for years. And while the corporate world has found sustainability to be something new to talk about in the last four or five years, we've done it for 30, 40 years. So it's really what we do. And when you think about ESG, environmental social governance, you know, really getting the people, the people part of this right, getting the environmental part of this right is really important to us. And uh, we trademarked a phrase ESG plus C. Why plus C? Plus C is our customers. What we do for customers, take a hotel, we can reduce water consumption in a hotel, we can reduce energy consumption, we can protect the food chain. These are really sustainable things that create for a healthy living, healthy planet. And so uh, sustainability is at the core of what we do and really thrilled that Diversity and Selenis came together with a common DNA around sustainability. I like the plus C. The plus C is actually pretty central to whatever we people do. I mean, guest experience, guest satisfaction is one. The other one, the C is also for our commitment to our planet, right? So I'm sure it could be plus C, C. Yes, for sure. And like, I could give you, you know, some good examples of like maybe some sustainable programs that we're launching. We, we'll launch a new product in the Indian market soon about a, a pod, a high concentrated, chemistry cleaner that will reduce the uh, the waste associated with plastic packaging there you, are. you take the pod you put it in your bottle it dissolves and you have your cleaner or you put it in your dishwasher so we have a lot of programs really trying to protect the planet because there's a lot of plastics and a lot of waste ends up in landfills and uh, that's probably not a sustainable world so there's no waste carryover that's that's our objective excellent so now, John, if you can give us a quick feel of your business investment plans in India in view of global positioning of the Indian market and what does that mean for India, one, and two, do you also plan to make India as a base for your supply chain logistics for other markets? Yes, so the way we think about our business is local for local. That doesn't mean in every country, but like what we'll do is we have in India all our market verticals we invest in people so we train the people uh, we, you know we build the people as professionals in our end markets supply chain is generally regional so Southeast Asia is where our manufacturing base India, India likely is the the hub of that but we won't have a plant in every part of Southeast Asia and then we have application laboratories R&D laboratories like we have here in Mumbai to take the products that we have, the core technologies, but optimize them for the Indian market. Uh, you know, I think the, the, the real key is not every market has unique needs and our ability to customize that technology to meet the needs of the Indian customer, I think is where we can, where we really excel. And so that's what our laboratories do. I visited the one here in Mumbai. I think it's excellent. We look to continue to build that out to create so solutions for the Indian market. Excellent. So, like I did say before, I like your clarity of thought. Directionally, you know where you're headed. You've already put your money where the mouth is. And uh, so, so far, so good. Thank you, John. You're welcome. Allow me to move to Sumer now. So, Sumer, uh, uh, you're an old hand who's looking after 25 countries in your uh, portfolio. So, you know, as somebody who leads the emerging markets, what commonalities and prospects do you observe in the dynamic market? And how optimistic are you about its potential? And do you identify any risks with your investments? Well, look, I mean, what I love about this part of the world is three things. Capability, will, and attitude. And I'll talk about each one of them. So we spent significant amount of time and effort to upskill our people. Then our people go to institutions like this hotel and solve problems and be partners for life. So that's extremely important. Well, so we hire people for, for a long run and we invest on those people. And they go and uh, partner with the customers. And the last one is they do it with a smile. All three of them are extremely important behaviors in our business. So you talked about the, uh, the risk. So look, I mean, this part of the world, 
uh, will have risks. Today, it's the Middle East, right? Middle East is a volatile place. What I love about this part of the world, again, is every year there will be an issue somewhere, somehow, but the rest of the other market will offset all of those risks, and we will deliver what we say we will deliver. You know, being not too far away from India, based out of Dubai, I, I want to ask this, Turk. Uh, what does the recently signed comprehensive economic partnership agreement between the government of India and the government of United Arab Emirates mean for your business and what are the opportunities that you entail for your business uh, with it in India? Well, look, I think it's a, it's a great <coughs> opportunity for both businesses. Is it win-win? It, it is, definitely. So, and I've seen it in between UAE and Egypt some five years ago. And typically what it ends up with is the other UAE makes a significant infrastructure investment in this case to India. So what does that mean is that it creates labor, it creates facilities, it creates opportunities for India as a country and us serving to those opportunities. So I welcome the change. And also given the fact that the relationships between UAE and India yeah. are at a level which have very few parallels. You know, the leadership to leadership relationship are very fast and the decision making is hyper fast. Correct. All right. Excellent. So, brings me to the third question and that is to do with Solenis. In what ways does Solenis distinguish itself for customers compared to competitors? You know the competitors. And what sets your ap approach apart in meeting their needs? Okay. So I define businesses at two levels. There are the foundation businesses that we partner and solve problems, right? And then we make markets. So we define, we come up with the other unidentified needs. We spend a lot of time to connect with customers to understand what they will need in the coming period. Then go back, and John talked about our R&D center here. Come up with solutions specific to their needs and, come and, and just go ahead and solve their needs. So that's how we differentiate. And I think India is a gem or a signature market for us that we demonstrate what I said uh, impeccably over the years. And, uh, you know, it's uh, important to state over here for our uh, viewers that diversity leads India like nobody else does, right? And that's correct. It gets further emboldened and solidified for its business with the coming in of Solenis. Yeah. So you have a great opportunity here and you already have made great investments in Mumbai with, uh, I think it's one of your three R&D centers anywhere in the world? That is correct. All right. And not only that R&D center develops solutions for India, but we create solutions for India and then globalize it or that R&D center brings the uh, global solutions to India as well. Excellent. So tell me, um, in what ways does Solenis distinguish itself for customers com as compared to competitors? Uh, and what sets your approach apart in meeting their needs? So as I said, um, we try to focus <coughs> on the unmet needs. So the, as, lo as, as soon as we identify the unmet, unmet needs, then we go back and just try to seek for solutions to those unmet needs and just partner with customers for life. One thing I could add to that Please. that, uh, that uh, I think really uh, differentiates us. As Summer said, we invest a lot in people, in having people become experts, whether it's a hotel or any other vertical. And once they become experts and solve problems, what we want them to do in Salinas is document those problems. Document how much water, document the sustainable impact, and we like to keep track of that so that we can report back to our verticals, look, you know, this is not just talk, this is documented results. I think that differentiates us from our major competition who can talk the same game, we execute the game. And also, uh, your training programs are legendary. Correct. And the SOPs are pretty much in place. All that you do is fine tune them and then apply and execute, which is such a great approach. And I'm privy to that. Uh, that brings me to the fourth question. Tell me as a market leader, what factors have contributed to your sustainable success and what strategies do you have in place to maintain this position 
over the next decade and perhaps beyond? Yeah. Look, India is <coughs> asset one of our gems, and we love the, uh, the GDP growth of the country. Anybody we, does, by yeah, the way. Exactly. And who doesn't yeah. want to operate it in India, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. And I think the, uh, the main difference that we have compared to many of the other players and our competitors is we are very well dispersed on this market. So we have multiple manufacturing sites, nationwide distribution, nationwide sales and service. So we are well placed to capture the other uh, growth. Uh, we don't get complacent to grow with the other uh, country, but we just bring all of our innovations to accelerate the growth beyond the GDP growth of the other country. So we continue to invest and we will double down in India. But that's the oh, answer. Oh, that's excellent. So that's a great approach. Um, all I can say is India is in good hands. Um, that brings me to you, Brijesh. Uh, uh, tell me, what the, you've, been, you've been a solid player. You've done 25 long years. 25 years. Right, so uh, continue. Tell me over the past three decades as a long-standing player in the Indian market, what notable shifts that you've seen in the industry dynamics and more importantly customer behavior that you've observed and what trends do you foresee in the foreseeable future? Okay, so I can speak about it because I've spent 25 years in the industry. Mm. So let me give an analogy from the marketing, which is the three P's, uh, the people, the place where we execute the solutions and the products. So let me first come to the people. 25 years, 30 years back, people would not like to be associated with anything to do with cleaning and hygiene in the institution space. They would, they would uh, not dare to tell anybody that where they are working and what kind of work they are doing. That has made a significant change now. People have a lot of respect for this kind of a role uh, and they don't shy away from telling that we are working for this particular organization or this is the work we do or we work at the airports or we work at McDonald's or we work at Pizza Hut's. So there is a lot of pride which is associated with it. Second is the place. 25, 30 years back, the most premium five-star hotels would love to use a solution which is formulated because they will understand the definition of a formulated products, how it improves the life of the asset, how it is safe for the people, how it is good for their assets and why it is good for their own customers. And they were willing to invest 25 years back. That has changed dramatically now. Even a smallest hotel in a C or D category town in India wants to use those solutions now. And the change has been because the people who own those hotels come to the A category city and stay in a five star hotel. They want to carry back the same memories and bring it back to the hotels where they come from. So that is the second big change uh, which is there. And third is the product. So 25 years back, we used to carry those big 50 liter kind of a drums with a solution which will dilute 50 times. Now we have uh, 1 20th of the size of the drum which would dilute 50, 50 times or 100 times or uh, 2500 times. That is a big change which has come in. So essentially, in last 25 years, we have cut down enormously on the plastic, we have cut down on the water consumption, we have cut down on the carbon emissions uh, and that is something which we have done on our own. So the government pressure has not been there as you would know there in India. Uh, however, we, we felt as a responsible organization, this is the bare minimum we should be doing. Somewhere I think we need to look within and figure out this is what I must do without looking at what the government wants us to do what is good for the planet is good for us, like they say, right? So that kind of commitment is adorable. But let me now come to your tenure. If you were to reflect back over the last decade uh, and India's economic trajectory, which key sectors have been instrumental in propelling the growth of your business, one? And what do you anticipate as shifts in this trend or is continuity expected? Okay. So in the last decade or so, hospitality has remained a mainstay of our business. There has been a consistent growth in the hospitality. There has never been an explosive growth in the hospitality, which otherwise you would see in a country like uh, China. There has always been more demand for the rooms, but we have been able to produce less rooms here in India because of various governmental issues, <coughs> etc. Uh, 
the land is not easily available, the size of the land is not available, you need 52 licenses to open a hotel and it takes a long 5-6 years and somebody needs to have that kind of a cash to, to withstand that kind of a time period. But still hotel has continued to remain our growth driver. What has made a significant change in the last 10 years is the outsourcing of the cleaning and hygiene to the third parties. So earlier 10 years back people would love to do the cleaning and hygiene by deplo deploying their own people, now they have started outsourcing it. So this particular industry has con continued to grow at an impressive 20% plus keg over the last 10 years. Uh, that has something which has driven our business uh, very well. Uh, the third area where I would say we have seen a good growth uh, in the industry is in the uh, healthcare segment. Healthcare segment has grown very well, especially in the last 5 years. Private players have come in, the private equity players have come in who wants to invest here in India. Everybody understands that India is a country where there is a huge population, people would fall sick, people would need beds, so private players are coming in. The government policies are very pro people here, so you would see in the last 5 years the number of beds which the government has added are tremendous. So in the last 5 years the number of beds which the government has added is equal to the beds which the government had added in the last 15 years. So that has brought in a tremendous change. The consciousness of the people in the healthcare industry has increased a lot in the last five years. So I, th I, th I think these three sectors primarily would continue to drive our growth. We are also aspiring to reach to the next level. So we have penetrated well in the top segment where customers love our product. We are able to add value to them. We are able to reduce carbon footprint consistently. We invest in a lot of uh, uh, R&D activities so that we come out with the products uh, of the future. John just now explained about the pods. Uh, nobody is asking for it but we know it is going to reduce the plastic consumption tremendously. Mm, so we continue to do uh, that and uh, the next level which we are looking at is those category of customers. We call them typically B category of the markets uh, who aspire to have the same standards of the 5 star hotels and we are working in that direction. That market is growing very well at the rate of 10% percent, and uh, we expect to ride on that particular wave. Excellent. And also the promise of diversity. Yeah, right. one so thing. It's like, you one know, it's the hallmark or the stamp of assurance. So one thing we have consistently told our people uh, is deliver your promise. Yeah. That, is, that, is, that used to be a training program. So if you have promised, come what may we will deliver it. Sometimes we have incurred losses in delivering a promise. But customer remember those uh, moments. So over a period of five or ten years, we would have we would have committed something which we otherwise should not have been committed. But uh, we have still delivered those promises at the at the at the cost of a huge amount of money to be spent in delivering that promise. So tell me, how do you uh, perceive the geographical market uh, around the Indian Peninsula, and what considerations shape your approach in this region that you drive? I'm particularly. Uh, very uh, uh, interested in two markets in uh, Sark area, Sark region, South Asia, uh, which is Sri Lanka and Bangladesh, for two reasons. Uh, both are uh, both are very focused on the core uh, competency which they have. Which Sri Lanka has the uh, tourism and Bangladesh has the manufacturing. Bangladesh manufacturing is very well aided by the kind of SOPs which they get from the European Union as well as the American uh, government. So we expect Bangladesh to continue to grow at a trajectory of 6% uh, GDP growth. Uh, population is huge, 160 million people there. Uh, economy is of decent size. Uh, so I think uh, next 5 to 10 years and more importantly the stable government. Recently the elections have completed. So uh, you have another 5 years of stability. Another 5 years of the same government, the policies would continue. And uh, we, we don't expect much of a turbulence there in the uh, Bangladesh market. Sri Lanka went through some tough times. It but is they're coming back? They are coming back very smartly and very strongly. They have learned from the past. And I expect Sri Lankan economy to come back very fast. And because of the tourism, a lot of SOPs are being given to the hotels there to, to come up with the hotels. Uh, and we expect to ride on that particular wave. So I've had a very interesting session with you gentlemen, uh, there's no going away, there's something very common uh, to your heritage, your Italian heritage, Turkey and India which is the family structure, right? So we're rooted in our family structure, be it our value system or our, 
our commitment. John, you came to India in 1987. Yeah, I'm still counting. How many years is that? Long. 37 years ago, <laughs> right? And you're a father twice over and a grandfather thrice over. Five times. Five times. There you are, five times. So let's hear about the India in 1987 to now. Why there's don't like, you tell uh, us so what you saw then so and your 30 odd trips here? And it, it's yeah. uh it's a fascinating <coughs> change you know some of you have have lived the change I, I get to visit and see the change but phenomenal of you know what's happened here and it's just been it's an interesting story for me coming early you know some of these countries and seeing what it was like then and what it's like now it's just so dramatically different uh you know obviously there's huge upsides from here but it's been a fun story. I love the country. I love the people. I love the food. So I've uh, been to many different events here, been to a couple Indian weddings, and just uh, it's one of my favorite places to go. Has your family come in? Yes. What my wife, are? my son. Yes. Yeah. Oh, excellent. So, man, about you? Well, look, I mean, if I'm to use one word <laughs> to dis describe India, that would be the buzz. That buzz. Uh, aligns very strongly with the economic activity. The minute that you land at the, uh, the airport, you get out, you see the people, everyone is just doing some activity, but there is that, that constant flow of people. I think that gives the, uh, uh, the dynamism that, that India has. I really look forward to, to see the continued dynamism here. But so the good thing is you live in a little India in Dubai? That, that's correct. Right? 50% so of the people in UAE so are, are I mean, you've well. spoken to me about your love for Indian food over right. there. And your love for the black dal? I'm going to have some tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you love it. Yeah. And for those who are uh, not informed, uh, uh, Somer takes to paneer like an Indian would. So, yeah. True. So, I love it. Yeah, Brijesh, what is your uh, take about India? Because you've spent time recently in Singapore, you've done a few years there, you spent time in Holland, and now with John and Somer. So let's hear you, <coughs> and you, let's get a feel of what drives you. I'm, <coughs> I'm extremely optimistic about the future of India, uh, and I can go on and on. Uh, till cows come home, but uh, let me put it this way. Very clearly, next 15 years belong to India. And I have very strong and fundamental reasons why, why it belongs to India. So the macro fundamentals of the economy are in place. Uh, our fiscal deficit is in control. The CAD is in best ever shape. Uh, Forex is not an issue. We have a huge $600 billion uh, in, in, in our kitty. Uh, we are focusing on the right things, which is the renewable energy, which brings down further our forex spend, which otherwise happens. Uh, our alliances are in good shape, uh, so which ensures that we are insulated by and large from all the activities which are happening outside India. Uh, we are internally cons consumption driven economy, 75% of the uh, consumption happens here. We don't need to, you manufacture it here and you have people here to consume it, which is very attractive market for the manufacturing. Mm, government is making all the right noises that we want to create jobs, so, uh, so elect us back. So I expect this government to come back after five, uh, in the coming elections and probably repeat after another five years because I don't see an alternate for the next 10 years, which means that there would be a consistent policy for the next 10 years. And stability. And stability, which is extremely important. And continuity of uh, directions. Law, yeah. law and order is absolutely in control. <laughs> uh, the judiciary is uh, very active, so people can trust uh, the judiciary here in India. So all the right things for anybody to make investments. And if you have that kind of an environment, your economy is bound to grow. And our neighbors uh, outside India, uh, where you have a huge manufacturing uh, activity, uh, I am sure over a period of time, you would, you would start seeing many companies shifting their production here in India, uh, which means we have more work to do as diversity or as solanus uh, with the water treatment solutions. So mm, I have never been so optimistic about it, uh, the, about the future of India. I hope you're making a note of all this. <laughs> I did. <laughs> all right. Okay, great. So uh, it's been wonderful having you three gentlemen on the show. Let me conclude uh, by extending my heartfelt uh, gratitude 
to you gentlemen and uh, Solenis and Diversi and for sharing your individual perspectives and insights. Your contributions have enriched our understanding of the dynamic landscapes shaping the future of water treatment, hygiene solutions and global collaborations. As we draw curtains on today's dialogue, let us carry forward the spirit of innovation and collaboration ignited by these discussions. Together we can pave the way for a sustainable and prosperous future for industries and around the globe. <coughs> thank you once again for joining us. And thank you ladies and gentlemen once again for joining this special show. This is Bhuvanesh Khanna signing off from the BWH Dialogue show. Stay tuned for more enriching conversations over a period of time. There's exciting stuff which is planned ahead. There are more dialogues of the BWH Dialogue that you should be looking forward to soon, which I shall be canning. Thank you again. Bye-bye. So Lennis is a power brand in its own sphere. Let's also detail India's leading brand in its space diversity. So I think uh, we, we, we believe that India is a really a, a great place for us to invest. Well, that's excellent. We hire people for, for a long run. People have a lot of respect for this kind of a role. What is good for the planet is good for us, like they say. Trademarked a phrase ESG plus C. Plus C is our customers. I like the plus C. Well, look, I think it's a great opportunity for both businesses. But I like your clarity of thought, the message of our Prime Minister, vocal for local.